Okay, everybody. So it's ice season again. Here you can see my fray bill predator that I've been building in the last couple of years to use as a sleeper. as a kind of a base camp from out ice fishing multiple days. And I'll have another video on that soon regarding some updates we've done to that since the build you can see on my channel. Um, but today we're starting a new heating system. I've been intrigued with these Chinese diesel heaters you can buy. They're knockoffs of the Urbacher or the Webastos you can get for boats and RVs and whatnot. And so I've been toying with the idea of making one of these. Uh, you know, my buddy heaters have worked great for years, but they do produce extra water vapor um, as well as some other inherent issues with combustion. Again, the, the buddy heaters are fantastic. They're, I feel fairly safe with them with the CO2 deck, CO detector in the tent with me and whatnot, but I'm intrigued with the idea of making one of these portable versions of these Chinese diesel heaters. So um, I've got most of the stuff laid out. I've been buying some extra stuff. Uh, my intention here is I want to build this heater such that it fits all inclusive inside this. I think this is about the right size. I'm looking at this is a, I think it's a Remington, or no, it's a Plano. Um, uh, you know, plastic tub you can get. I think I got this at Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't remember. It might have been uh, even at uh, Sportsman's Warehouse or somewhere like that. But anyway, it's a nice heavy-duty plastic case with latches. And the idea is I want to build this whole mess such that it fits inside here, efficiently runs well, and uh, uh, I can use it as a portable heater for ice fishing. I will hook up to the... The tent here, I've already built an inlet for this window that I hardly ever use op have open. You can see it's got the, uh, the vent that I can turn and twist and point. But the idea is to have it all inside this one box. So that said, I did have to get a different tank. This is the tank it comes with, which is a 10 liter tank if I remember right. And it seems like a pretty good tank, but uh, it doesn't quite fit in this box with the uh with the cap on it and so i was able to find a slightly smaller version this is still a seven liter tank so it's about in between the smaller ones a lot of guys have been using for these and the 10 liter comes with this is a seven liter tank and this one actually fits beautifully inside this case and so it'll go in there uh, i haven't decided if i'm gonna use the top uh, fuel outlet for it. There's some benefits there, but also some some cons, but uh, we'll see how that go, plays out when I build it But uh, this is what it comes with. This is the heater. This is the effluent air hose. This is the um, Inlet air hose for the combustion chamber. You've got the exhaust and the exhaust muffler Probably gonna get a second one of those uh, so I can have two in line um, This is the little dosing pump it comes with and you know various parts and pieces including I bought this as a this is for a boat. This is the exhaust. This is for a, uh, an exhaust port for a boat, which uh, this is the same size exhaust as these are designed as these heaters are designed for. And so I've got that. I've got a diff. This is the uh, muffler, or it's a it's a silencer slash filter for the air inlet. They're okay, but a lot of folks I know of have upgraded these to other filters. And so I've got another air filter coming for that, hopefully in a day or two. Um, so I probably wouldn't end up using that. And then I also, I picked up one of these covers for the pump to help it be a little quieter as well. I've got some other ideas for keeping that pump. Those pumps are notoriously kind of loud for tick, 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 tick noises. So we'll see what I can do to silence that. And then I also, I picked up some of these. This is a three inch uh, hose flange. And then this is a four inch. The Influent air for these Chinese air uh, heaters is about three and a half or roughly or so. I can't remember exactly. And then the effluent on it's a little bit bigger. Um, you know, where the hot air comes out is a little bigger. But I bought these because I wanted to. I'm gonna. I got this idea to make. And I modified one side of each. I'm gonna put them together, and these will mount through the inside of the box, and then the heater will actually be mounted to one side. And then there'll be a flange sticking out at each side of the box, one for the air coming in, one for the air going out. So I can just hook up, for example, this is the hose I'm going to use to connect the hot air coming out to the tent or wherever I'm sleeping in. Um, and I can hook it up to there, 
but I can just store this inside the box when it's in transport also. Just take this out, slide it over the uh, flange here. It's gonna stick out the side of, outside the, from inside the box. And uh, same thing with the influent because uh, uh, if, they're in a, if you're ever in a super cold environment and you want to have recirculate the air, so if you wanna bring in some of the partly warmed air from the tent through the heater, to warm back up again you can do that because the combustion exhaust is all separate and uh, um, so I, I, I want to have a flange so I can hook up a hose to that as well so I can pull air from inside the tent if I want so anyway those are and you know various parts and pieces obviously hose clamps uh, this is the electrical system that uh, comes with the heater as, as well as some hose management uh, stuff I got to clean it off when I get to that point um, but yeah this is uh, what I'm starting with and uh, We'll cut out here in a minute and I'll get to the point where either I'm in either in a good part of the build or when it's all said and done, we'll show you a video of the whole thing. But uh, this is uh, what we're starting with. See you in a bit. Okay, folks, uh, apologies. I did not take any video of this build during the process. Um, totally intended to, but I'm not a professional. Just uh, sharing with you uh, um, what I'm been doing so anyway so it's all done you'll notice oh it all fits in this box um, these are these folding uh, you know steps tools you can get uh, I think I got these at Harbor Freight um, anyway uh, we're gonna use those and I'll show you that in a minute uh, the, the whole box sits on here when it's running but uh, this is the diesel on the heater box so uh, as you can tell uh, this is the box I showed you at the beginning of the video everything I showed you and intended to have inside this box is indeed inside this box um, this is the 12 volt uh, quick, uh, quick connect right here for the 12 volt power. I'll show you that in a bit here as well. But uh, we'll be able to put it all in. So what we have on here is uh, on one side, you'll notice there's, this is where the hot air comes out. Um, this is also the exhaust for the combustion chamber. This is a, three -hole, a through hole footing you can buy for boats. Uh, and it's designed to go with this these uh, diesel heaters and so it was the right 24 millimeter size for the exhaust and what's nice about this is it's got a double chamber system in here so uh, it allows the hot air to escape this box it doesn't melt the plastic though because it keeps it cool so anyway opposite side is the influence side uh, this is a four inch diameter um, which is standard uh, four inch uh, on the US side. You'll notice if you look inside, hopefully you'll see the, the grate of this kind of the screw on cap for these Chinese diesel heaters is still in there. Um, but this allows me to, if I want to do a recirculation type of a setup, all I have to do is quick connect on here, a standard four inch like a dryer vent hose or anything like that and run it into the, t into the tent uh, or the, wherever I, whatever I want to recycle the hot air from and it'll you know, cycle the hot air um, that way. Uh, but I can just run it like this as, as the standard um, setup. This is the uh, imp, this is the port for the uh, combustion air uh, influent, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, how the filter goes on there. But anyway, it's all in the box. So let's pop open this box and I'll show you how it came out on the inside and then I'll set it up and we'll run it and let you see it running. So. As you can see, everything uh, fits neatly inside here. Um, we have the uh, the fresh air intake for the combustion chamber. This is the same size as it comes with the one that comes with these Chinese heaters, but it's an upgraded, more of an automotive type style air filter. Uh, the air filter slash silencer it comes with uh, has its problems and uh, um, decided to get one of these. It's the same, same uh, uh, same pipe diameter here and the same uh, connector here, but uh, anyway, picked up one of those. This is the hose that uh, connects to the hot air you know, effluent that then hooks up to your tent or whatever you want to cycle the hot air into. Uh, in here also is the uh, muffler that comes with this, sil silencer, muffler, whatever I call it. I'll show you that hooked up in a minute as well. And then of course the power cord here the with the controller and whatnot. Uh, this particular unit has a handheld controller and it has uh, a remote control as well that I'll uh, use, I imagine. And then, of course, here's the wire harness for the 12 volt. I'll show you that in a sec as well. So uh, what you end up with, and when you look inside here, this is the, the 7 liter tank I, sh I showed you before. It fits perfectly inside this box. fits really, really well. 
Uh, down here is the pump. Uh, you'll notice the pink cover over the pump. I got that on Amazon. It's kind of a hard, medium hard, uh, kind of a silicone type of a, uh, a cover that goes on this. And I got it primarily to help silence the uh, the tick, tick, tick noise of these pump, uh, uh, this, that these, 12, these uh, diesel pumps make. And it does a pretty good job. Uh, it doesn't muffle it completely, but uh, it does a pretty good job. Uh, we've got the fuel filter down there as well. And I decided not to use the fuel uh, um, tube that was already on this particular tank I had bought because it's on the top, which had this advantage, the idea of you know, not having to you know, be a leaking point, for example. But I wanted to minimize the amount of hose that was between the tank and the heater. Um, so I ended up just installing one of the... Uh, um, fuel uh, spigot, whatever you want to call it, down there, and that, that way have a very short run through the filter to the pump, and then a very short uh, actual um, nylon fuel line into the heater itself. So uh, you'll notice here's the that through hole fitting that I was, the, for the exhaust. Uh, if you can see there also is the I wrapped the exhaust with the it's an uh, exhaust wrap. You can get it for mufflers and whatnot, automotive wraps, and it'll just help reduce the heat a little bit in here. It still gets a little bit warm in here, not like warm warm, but uh, just uh, a little bit of warmth from the you know the heater itself, which will, which is great. Um, helps keep the fuel from gelling up if you're running pure diesel. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the, the heater itself, I, I made this box down there you can see that it sits on uh, and it allowed, give me a spot to mount the pump to, but also it raises this up in the box so that I can have it, the heater towards the top of the box, which allows the, of course, the exhaust, which comes out of the bottom to, to go out as well as the air intake to come in and, uh, uh, and be installed as it's designed to be installed. Um, the... The bracket that these comes with the metal bracket is attached to that box and there's a huge cutout um, in the top of that box um, so that there's no wood of that box anywhere near the actual uh, um, exhaust of this unit so it doesn't get hot at all down there so it works out really, really well um, and so as far as you know on this end I found this uh, reducer coupler or whatever it's just kind of a rubbery silicone type of a coupler and what that does is you know the 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 diameter of that screen cap thing on the air influent of these Chinese heaters is like a three and something size it's I don't know what the millimeter size but it's probably like 75 or something but or centimeters I don't know but anyway um, I found that if I got this and I put just two wraps of duct tape black duct tape around that that cap it brought it to the right diameter to then couple this to it which then changes it to a standard four inch. So I can use standard four inch hosing now uh, for that recirculation uh, application like I talked about before. So uh, that's that. On this side, this is just the, the, the hose that these units comes with, um, just attached here and then to a, a pass through I made out of two flanges that I showed you earlier in the first part of the video here as well. And uh, uh, this is what I connect the actual hose to, which I'll show you when I get it set up. So anyway, uh, yeah, so seven liter tank, it, it, it's the thing works beautifully, actually. Uh, I'm really impressed with the way it turned out. I'm really happy with the, how compact into this box it is and how just very streamlined and efficient it is. You know, I did leave enough room uh, on the edge of the, uh, the tank and on the sides here. Um, you'll notice because I want, and the, on the bottom of the box, you'll see I've put a piece of the, that foam anti-fatigue type mats you can get for garages and stuff. Uh, Cause it's also a really good sound dampener. And uh, the plan is if I, as it stands now, the, the ticking noise of this pump actually isn't, isn't hard. It's barely noticeable at all. But if I find myself really still bugged by it, I can take this and line the sides and the lid with that same foam material and it should reduce whatever remaining little tick tick noises I get from the pump. Uh, sufficiently so anyway so that's uh really happy it turned out you know the um, controller is really easy to work with again it comes mine comes with a remote control as well um i've got this wire harness here that i set up to provide the power so it has this quick connect here that connects to the this uh through uh through uh connector here that i set up and uh, I currently have it set up with a couple little uh, spade things. I'm going to use the battery I'll show you. I'm going to use for this demonstration. Hooks with that. I can hook to a regular battery with some alligator clips. And then I also have another one of these set up with a six millimeter DC because I plan to run this 
from my Jackery 500, which has an, uh, a six millimeter DC output uh, on there. So um, one of the things about these heaters is you never wanna have them on a source that could potentially uh, lose power. Uh, I don't like the idea of using just a cigarette lighter type of a 12 volt connection because if those get bumped or pop out, um, these heaters, when they shut off, they have to go through a, a shutdown cycle. And if you, if you just shut the power off completely, it'll cause these to overheat and possibly, um, well, very likely there's a plastic, uh, computer housing or computer panel inside here that the control panel, it'll melt that and uh, cause all kinds of problems. So you want to have this connected to a constant source of tw 12 volt power. Um, and so I'm gonna run it off the Jackery for that reason. But anyway, I'll, let me uh, get it all set up and, and running and I'll uh, come back and show you this thing in operation and uh, some additional information. Okay, folks. So here's the box operating. It can run for a few minutes. I currently have it set on the highest setting it has. Um, and I, I've got this little nine amp hour 12 volt battery I'm using just to show you the demo here. Um, but anyway, see this long hose this is what I'll use to connect this to the tent that I'm gonna ice fish out of or my base camp uh, it's an aluminum aligned PVC heater type thing and it works found it on Amazon it's the right size to fit this weird three something inch size effluent on these but uh, uh, what I did is I just got these little thumb screw type hose clamps so it makes it really easy to disconnect me take that out of the box and fix inside but uh but anyway so yeah so as far as things uh set up here so you'll again you'll notice i've got this set up on these two uh folding step stools the idea being again i'm, I'm gonna use this a lot for ice fishing um in a, in a in a tent that i've set up for sleeping in and uh this will be outside the tent with that hose connected to that inlet I showed you on the tent at the beginning of the video. But uh, anyway, so here's that four inch diameter uh, air inlet. So I, what's nice is if I wanna recirculate the air in the tent, it's super easy. All I have to do is hook on a four inch line, run that into the tent. Now I'm pulling air from inside the tent, reheating it more, and out it goes back into the tent. Uh, but as a standard, uh, I don't think I'll need that. I think this is gonna be way more heat than I need for that little tent. But if I wanted to, I could do that. Um, and uh, I'll also, I also have a, a four inch just standard elbow that I'll put on here if it's really wet or really snowy on any given day so that it's still pulling air in, but it's not, you know, it's, it'll protect it from any stuff. But I'm also need to, I'm gonna build a little, a little uh, cover for this air intake for the combustion chamber. So it'll, it'll come, it'll just connect to the outside of this box, but then I can take it off and store it inside with everything else just to keep any snow from falling on top of this air intake. Um, but also with it raised up like this, it won't be next to the snow if any of snow drifts come up on or anything like that. But, uh, but yeah, so I've got the, uh, this is an example of the alligator clips I showed before. Right now it's hooked up just with the uh, uh, little, little connectors that I have for the battery. But uh, that's that side. On this side, you can see this is where the hot air comes out right here. In fact, uh, let me grab the temperature right here. This, uh, this, this little, uh, muffler or silencer, whatever you call it, uh, just connects right to the uh, this through this through hole footing that I told you about. It works great. Um, and this the whole this whole uh, ex, uh, exhaust actually slopes gently to this point. This is the lowest point of the exhaust, which is actually a little hole at the bottom of these that you need to have pointed down. Uh, a lot of people miss that when they run these; they have them sideways or upside down. Or so whatever configuration they want to fit their needs, but this hole really needs to be down because that's, a, that's a, a drain hole for condensation. Um, but anyway, so they had a combustion air from that. You notice there's no smoke and all these things are run very, very efficiently. Um, I'll show you why in a second. But uh, as far as temperature wise, if you're curious, we'll run a quick check. The effluent air coming out of this thing is currently at 168, uh, which is uh, 172. Right in that range, so we're pretty hot. And again, it's at the, high, the, the highest setting right now, and it blows really well too. It's a nice, uh, nice flow of air. So uh, you can turn these down, which I'll do here. So for example, it was on the highest. I'll set it down to a four. And by the way, you'll notice you don't hear any of the ticking sound of that pump in there. You hear the blower obviously blowing. And again, that's the hot, the highest uh, setting. 
but uh, it'll cycle down here into the into this this lower setting I just set it to, um, and even then, I don't know if, I can't hear it even now. I don't know if it's been, anything's being picked up on the on the camera here, but I hear no ticking of that little pump at all. So anyway, let's open this up and I'll show you this thing operational. So with the lid off, you probably notice you can hear that pump ticking away now. A little bit with the, with the lid on, it's pretty good. So again, if it gets really bad or if I, if I end up finding myself noticing it more, I'll, uh, I'll just line it with that uh, additional insulation material and that should solve that problem. Um, but yeah, thing runs really, really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, I have to give total credit. Uh, if anybody's interested in doing something like this or interested in these type of heaters, for whatever application you want. Highly recommend you checking out uh, John MCK 47 whatever his YouTube channel is. I'll leave a link in the comment section here or the description here. Um, uh, fantastic resource. Uh, I consider him the guru of Chinese diesel heaters. Uh, uh, anybody who's interested in something like this or these heaters at all, I, I highly recommend you go to his website, his YouTube channel and check out, he did a whole series of videos that goes start to finish through these, these, these Chinese diesel heaters and talks about a lot of things that people get wrong and miss, uh, things about airflow that are important. He talks about the pumps in particular and how important it is to have the right angle on these, the minimum angle and, and whatnot. Um, he talks about uh, options for fuel. In fact, that's where I got my idea. I'm actually running an 80-20 mix uh, these are designed to run off diesel, but they run off kerosene just as well. The issue, as John calls out in some of his videos, is these pumps uh, are self-lubricating uh, based off of diesel. And so if you run it off pure kerosene, it'll run just fine. Uh, but it will start causing problems with the, those pumps wearing out sooner than they're supposed to. Uh, the metal parts inside will wear out because the diesel provides the lubrication. So. Uh, I don't anticipate gelling being a, an issue with this particular one, even though I'm going to use it for ice fishing, because again, there's a little bit of warmth coming off of this heater. I mean, I can touch it; it doesn't even it barely feels like like body heat warmth, uh, and it'll be enclosed. So I think the fuel inside this this uh, box will stay plenty warm. But either way, um, an 80/20 kerosene and 20% uh, diesel mix will solve that problem completely, uh, and it allows us to run a little bit more a cleaner, more efficient. The, uh, the kerosene just clean, doesn't have a lot of the impurities the diesel does, and so the little uh, vaporizer screen inside of here and the little uh, mechanism to burn in here do need some maintenance from time to time um, if you run just straight off diesel, but particularly di uh, dirty diesel. But uh, the kerosene mix hopefully will keep this uh, running nice and clean for a really, really long time before I need to service those few little parts in there. So 8020 is what I'm going to run in here. It's been running really well so far. Um, you'll notice there's absolutely no smoke coming out of this exhaust and uh, it's very, very clean burning. So uh, anyway, but he, it's one of the comments or one of the suggestions that are uh, lessons learned that John shares in his uh, series is about the, uh, the importance of running those pumps the correct way and, and to make sure that you can't orient them horizontal, for example, they'll wear out every time. And then, uh, so you have to have a minimum angle on them. And he talks a lot about that stuff. So anyway, so that's it running. It runs beautifully, uh, as you can see. Again, I have to give total credit to uh, to John and his his uh, video series that he has on YouTube. Uh, all the lessons learned that I pulled in here are ones that are from him. And then I also saw a lot of these builds folks have done out there, some pros and cons a lot of them had. Uh, I wanted to have this as compact as possible. I've seen people do these in some bigger boxes uh, or a, some of them done in boxes this size but a mounted the tank on the outside. Uh, but I really wanted to, to focus this on trying to fit it all inside this particular box. So it's easy, it's portable, everything packs inside as well as far as the, the components. And so um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So uh, let me shut this off for a sec. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cycle this thing down. In fact, I'll just show it to you. To turn it off on this particular one, you just hold the power button down until it shows off. And you'll know if you, you'll hear, you can hear it's still running. The pump has stopped ticking, but the the fan itself is still blowing it. So it goes through the cycle. It's very, very important that you make sure this shuts down the correct way so you don't uh, ruin your heater itself. So this is the five kilowatt heater. You can get them as low as three. Uh, I think go up to 10 or eight or 10. Uh, I think this is a bit overkill probably for what I'm gonna use it for. One of the little two or three kilowatt ones probably would have been fine and they're, they're slightly smaller. The five and the eights and the tens are all the same size. Um, 
But anyway, uh, I wanted to make sure that I could use this for other applications later on as well. And I figured, hey, I'll just uh, um, go with slightly bigger than I need and over engineer this a little bit. But anyway, uh, the box itself, again, it ran for a while. I, I can touch this and it, it's, it's, it's warm, like maybe a little above body temperature, hot but certainly not uh, uh, hot to the touch at all. So, but that's just enough to keep this tank slightly warm. So really happy with it. Um, so let me shut it, I'm gonna let this cool down and I'll bring it back and I'll show you how to, how I pack it all back up into the same box and uh, we'll close out there. All right guys, so I'll show you how we take this down. I let this, I've let this cool, it ran through its soft cycle and the exhaust over here is, is cooled down. So. This is that, uh, that hose I had connected at the beginning, all condensed down. But uh, let me show you how this works. So first thing I'll do is disconnect the power here. Close the cover on that. Set up the one inside here. Grab the controller. Set it inside. I'm gonna pop off, unscrew the combustion air intake, set it inside. This hose fits beautifully right there to the gas tank. I'll take off the muffler. And just uh, slide it in here in this void space on this side. The alligator clips in there. And Simply put the cover back on. And hey, that's it. All compact. Again, these are, these are obviously optional. I, I wanted to have it raise this up a little bit. You wouldn't necessarily have to, as long as you didn't have that uh, exhaust touching anything, you know, flammable, obviously, and uh, you weren't worried about something getting into the combustion air intake. But uh, the remote, I'll keep separate. I won't put it in the box. I'll actually put it on the keychain with my key for my either the quad or the snow dog I use the ice fishing with, so that's always with me and in my pocket. And uh, yeah, the intention is to have this sit just outside the tent, hook up to that. To that uh, panel I showed you at the beginning of the video in the tent and use the remote uh, to control it. The, I'm going to power this with the Jackery as I mentioned before and the Jackery will sit just inside the tent uh, along with um, the controller that's in here will just come into the tent and they'll sit on that corner of the tent over there so I can watch it and see it but I can control everything with this remote from, from the other side of the tent so I don't have to get out back and forth and mess with it, but uh, I uh, fully anticipate this thing will be able to run uh, uh, on probably the mid to lower end of the settings and keep that little tent plenty warm. So uh, time will tell. I'll certainly have a, a video up the first time I use it on the ice this year and get the uh, tents all set up and get the set up and we'll see how efficient it is. I, in, talk, in watching other videos and seeing other results from other folks have had, I anticipate that Jackery 500 should be able to run this four or five nights all night long. The, uh, the, the, these Chinese diesel heaters are actually fairly efficient on the power side. They consume a, uh, quite a bit of amps at the, at, when they first start up as the, as the glow plug gets going. But once that gets up and going, they don't draw a whole lot of power. And uh, they also don't burn a whole lot of fuel. Uh, most guys are run, you know, running these things all, all night long, for example, are seeing maybe a liter, liter and a half of, of, of burn. To, to keep them running all night long. Again, varies depending on how, what setting you have it on. But with a seven liter tank, I don't anticipate that running out uh, on any single given night. Again, I think I'll get three or four nights out of it at least. I'll certainly carry an extra gas can with some additional 80-20 mix that uh, I mentioned before. And, uh, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll find myself wanting slightly more power. And if that's the case, either I'll be able to upgrade to a, a higher Jackery or maybe a one of the goal zeros or something else has a little more oomph to it, but I, I, I think this will run it um, for many, many nights. So uh, time will tell. But again, thanks for watching. Appreciate uh, uh, you taking the interest. Again, if you have any interest in these Chinese diesel heaters in any application, highly suggest you go to 
John's uh, YouTube channel that I put the link for uh, here. Uh, fantastic, fantastic resource. Uh, mad props to you, John, for the great uh, tips and information. Uh, just a wealth of knowledge. Any kudos or credit I get for this build uh, has to go to John and, and the, the recommendations he provided in his video series. So highly recommend you check him out. So again, I uh, hope this inspired you. Hope you're interested in uh, and uh, hope you find uh, an opportunity to build something like this yourself. It was not difficult at all. And I would say just about anybody can do this with just some basic tools. So, uh, so uh, stay safe out there, stay warm out there and we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next one.